Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm so excited to share with you guys one of my best friends in the whole ro- world. The whole world. In the whole world, Rosanna Lopez. Thank you for having me today, Ooh. Brittany. I actually recorded my first podcast ever in your apartment, Rosanna, but you were not there. <laughs> That's true, yeah, <laughs> with Michaela. Yeah, you've been part of the story. Good acoustics, eh? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... Today's podcast is going to be just kind of us hanging out. We're literally laying in my bed <laughs> in my house in Copenhagen and, um, you know, hanging, just hanging like we were planning to do this podcast all day, yeah. but then I need to get a massage first. <laughs> and then Rosanna was on her way over and then I was having sex and she had to like wait on the side of the road because she didn't know where my house was. <laughs> and some Thai guys working there were like... <laughs> This lady looks like she has a problem. <laughs> like, is she okay? <laughs> and Just another phalang lady. <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, can I... S- yeah, uh, just g- go. Uh, can I send a message to future me? Yes, please do. It's okay if you change your mind <laughs> and learn new things. <laughs> You're not dumb for saying these things you're saying today. It's okay. Forgive yourself. It's fine. Okay, that's it. Thank you. So a while ago, we like analyzed all of the sex podcasts that we could find in the world. Yeah. And there really isn't that much out there. Okay. There's not great stuff. There isn't. Um, And and also, we're not really talking about (laughs) it... (laughs) Normally, <laughs> yeah, no, with my friends, I realize like I uh, I don't actually discuss these kind of intimacies because sometimes you feel like, well, for example, when you are with a person, you don't really want to, you know, mention their genitals or like what they like or what you've tried with them, right? And then you kind of go on to the next person <laughs> and you just forget, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, hey, girl, I learned these <laughs> techniques. But um yeah, yeah, it is uh, something that I think we should talk about more. Uh, even though you know I'm not having a lot of sex at this moment, so how's that going? Yeah, um, you know what? You gotta honor your own body, and a lot of things I didn't, um, I didn't, I just blocked them because I didn't know how I felt about them, or mm-hmm. I didn't feel safe. Mm-hmm. And then it's just easier to just like keep it at you know, an arm's length and just don't think about it, right? But, you know, as you may already know, as a frequent listener, (laughs) Copenhagen is a special place. So I'm learning a lot of new things, um, mostly related to safety and how I carry myself in the world. And those things are all helping. So who knows? Do you mean emotional safety or physical safety? Both. 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 Uh, emotional mm. f- safety, um, also learning to communicate my needs, but also kn- knowing what they are. I, I'm i actually in it right in the middle of it, so I'm not talking as if I'm some sort of expert. I think that's great. I'm learning it as we're doing this right now, and this <laughs> is like in the last few weeks, I learned that I forget that I have a body. Mm. <laughs> How does that feel? It feels uh, problemless, I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> my body never gives me any trouble. I forget it's there. This is why I have these weird things now that my body is like, hello, I exist. She's pointing at some injuries on her arm. Yeah, it looks like a dog leg. bit a piece of my arm, but it was really just a mosquito bite that got out of hand. And this island things get infected <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> the tropics what can we say but anyways um i realized that i didn't even feel my body so whenever you would say how does it feel in your body which i ask you all the time (laughs) which you ask all the time (laughs) and i just didn't know i don't know and it's so funny because i'm meeting so many people who feel everything and know how to verbalize Mm -hmm. everything Mm -hmm. that it's really interesting like I was I went to a circling event yesterday (laughs) because (laughs) and I'm trying new things why not um and there was there was this guy saying I have like a tense feeling in my left arm and it's coming all the way towards my chest is like wow that is yes I mean there is a lot going on in your body of course 
but like wow this guy actually knows how to verbalize it and he's feeling it it's interesting so uh i'm i'm learning how to feel my own body and you know and how it's trying to talk to me mm-hmm. um how you ask let me try to think how because i don't know wait yes yes there are ways so things that are helping me are meditation uh which i uh, was already doing but um in combination with breath work Mm -hmm. it is really helping uh checking in with myself I, i used to do body scans and i thought i was doing good but like i feel like even those are still very mind driven yeah in in your head yeah yeah um so i'm trying to attune more to what my body wants to tell me um how i feel do i feel safe um i'm the other day i was driving my scooter and i i released some real fears mm-hmm. i i mean i'm just gonna be honest to whoever's listening i live m- the way that i carried myself in the world and this is gonna be very harsh and i don't like saying this and i don't like that this was my truth but i felt like every man was bad until proven otherwise or do you mean unsafe or both yeah just not a good guy mm. potential threat mm-hmm. um could do something bad if he had a chance, could take advantage if he had a chance. Mm -hmm. This is a terrible way of living, Mm -hmm. right? It's very draining. And I just realized what a relief I feel for not feeling that Mm. anymore all the time. Of Mm -hmm. course, I'm still going through it. I'm still learning it. But uh, but yeah, so um, if you carry yourself like that in the world where you fear everything and... um, you know, a threat is just around the corner, then it's easier to not feel your body. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just numb it. Just numb it, and then you don't have to worry about it, and you can just... And also living in cities, you know, I've lived... I lived in London. I lived in Barcelona, where there's a lot of, like, pickpocketing. You are on your guard all the time, and all the noises and the stress and getting on the tube and... It's overstimulation. It's overstimulation, so... I don't think our bodies are made for this. No, not at all. So then again, it's easier to not feel, right? So I'm. Uh, but what do you process. think you? What do you think you gave up in order to not feel? Because there's always an oh. exchange. Well, or I um, guess what do you feel like you're gaining now that you're starting to feel yourself? Maybe that's a better say it in the um, positive. Trust, mm-hmm. joy. Mm. I can do all kinds of things that I'm saying yes to now that I wasn't saying yes to just to make sure that I was safe. Mm. Um, I feel that I have more power. Mm-hmm. Even though it's funny because before I thought I had more power. You are a very powerful person, girl. <laughs> Don't, aren't we both? I, huh? I want to back up a little bit and just talk about you for a second. So Rosanna... I met her like six year six years ago. I want oh. something like that. Yeah, seven, six, six, seven six years mm-hmm. ago. Um, she is we jokingly call each other the queens of our cities. So she is the queen of Lisbon. She started the digital digital nomads. Lisbon scene. doesn't know this, by the way. It's <laughs> yes. just us saying yeah. that. Uh, she started the Lisbon digital nomad scene and um and it's one of those, it's very funny with Rosanna because she won't ever claim it, but I w- I'm going to put it on you. And now... We're um, a team of 10. Just like now they have 10 volunteers and how many? 17,000 members? Yeah. Or I, d- I didn't even look in the last... Maybe um, 20,000 people yeah, part of I her community know. that she started. And on meetup.com. Yeah. And they... She's like me where she's a digital nomad and we have home bases around the world. So... Before COVID, especially, we would she would spend about three months, two to three months of the year in Lisbon. That was her one major base, and then the rest of the year travel all over the world. And I was jokingly called the Queen of Chiang Mai in the north of Thailand, and um, and then I would have that as my she main base. Mm, I have that as my main base, and then I would travel for most of the year, and then 
when COVID happened, so we were in many countries together and the last place we were in together before COVID was we met up in Brazil and we went to Carnival in Rio for like three, two or three weeks. It was so much fun. Just dancing everywhere and getting in Every all sorts day. of sorts of in trouble. In the morning. <laughs> 6 a.m., 4 a.m., <laughs> just getting up and going to the next Blocko party. Yeah. And then COVID happened and she got locked down in Lisbon and I was locked down here in Thailand on Koh Phangan. And... I would say that you were probably one of my, like, I have very, like, top five. I talked to Ferde about, like, my top five best girlfriends, mm -hmm. and you are definitely one part of that top five. Mm -hmm. But during COVID, I felt like you were the major one that I kept in contact with, like, almost daily, mm -hmm. you know? And there were so many times where we both were crying because we, like, missed each other so much. And, and then even after... COVID kind of led up a little bit you started traveling and I kept like almost meeting you <laughs> like going almost went to Argentina almost went here <laughs> almost went there and then we finally met up um when I came out to Europe this fall for your birthday and yes. it was so much fun and then you came here for my birthday in October in Copenhagen mm -hmm. and then now you've been here for a couple months and this is yeah. the longest place you've stayed right since besides Lisbon um or like potentially when Lisbon, when yeah because yeah yeah, now I have to get out because I've been here for three months. Um, yeah, so you're doing a visa run, but like when you come back, you yeah, know, I'll stay again for like you know another couple months. For, yeah, another couple months. But I just I'm just yeah. um, uh, here in Copenhagen for um, about a month and a half. Oh, mm -hmm. month and a half, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm just settling in, but I'm. Yeah, it's crazy. I, time is just a weird thing. Right? On this island, I especially. I don't even <laughs> know. It feels short, but it feels long, but it also feels like I finally can't, you know, getting my bearings. Is that yeah, yeah. a sentence? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and another thing is Rosanna knows like speaks fluently like six or seven languages. No, yes, no, you do. She always yes, exaggerates. You always no, do. I, I speak four. <laughs> That's way more than I speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, um, basically, now you're the queen of Copangang, right? Mm -hmm. Copangang? How are we going to say this, kids? Oh, if you ask Jasmine, my friend, oh, I'm damn. always pronouncing Maybe it wrong. Maybe, <laughs> how about we learn Co today? Copangang. Co Copangang, I don't know. There's the Thai, the thing is, is that I'm butchering it because yeah. the Thai way to say it is very tonal and... Yeah, I'm just... We will promise that after this episode, <laughs> we will learn how to finally say the name of the island. I love this island yeah. so much. Anyway. So you have you have been there through most of my journey after yeah. I left my cult. Um, yeah, yeah, so you yeah. have a very unique perspective of me coming into my self, I yeah, guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. My authentic self. So I thought it would be really cool to have you ask me any very vulnerable questions. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Anything you think that you want to ask me on this podcast. Cause I don't know. I feel like you know me. You definitely know me. Yeah. You and Michaela probably know me the most out of everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. Because, um, I met you those years ago and I instantly knew there was something about you. I, because she was running these events, but of course I was also recognizing myself in that, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I could just see how easy it was for you to connect with people, and how naturally it came to you, and what a gift you had, right? So I saw that from the beginning. Um, we we got closer a couple of years later. Um, actually, I don't know. Do you think like maybe pre-COVID? Yeah, no, yeah, obviously pre-COVID. Yeah. Huh. But anyways, I, um, what's the question that, it, well, cause there's a lot of things that you've let me let go of in the last years, I think. And yeah. I feel like your baseline is like at an incredible high level I mean high and low is is like weird words to use I don't know if these are the words I want to use but like at a level where you seem to know your worth mm -hmm. and you know who you are and you've you've gone super deep on all kinds of shadows and you know we we all have them obviously and maybe some of them we'll never let go of but I, that's like a really nice Scorpio thing of you that you just mm. dive in without fear. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and I, 
how do you look back at yourself when uh when like let's just assume like the person I met in Chiang Mai running the nomad events and the <laughs> communities how do you look back at yourself um I feel like back then I really wanted to have like knowing what I know now I definitely think that I was trying to recreate the family that I didn't have and growing up in the community that I grew up in uh, as a Jehovah's Witness it was really easy for me to build community but I had grown up in so much community that I didn't want like I I I grew up in a community where I had to be someone I didn't want I wasn't my authentic self in order to be accepted Mm -hmm. and so I I was like kept building these communities around the world and encouraging everyone to be themselves yeah. because I really wanted a safe space for me to finally feel like I could be myself but it was almost like you had to convince everyone else yeah I was like waiting for everyone else to drop in first mm-hmm. and then I was going to allow myself to drop in and it never really happened you know and then I just kept building more and more communities around the world and so looking back on that person that met you mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, in Chiang Mai like so many years ago I'm like kind of wish I could just give her a hug and tell her that she doesn't need to do all that stuff. She can just be herself and and the people that love her will be attracted to that. You know, she doesn't need to go out and like, yeah, like just <laughs> do so much do stuff yeah. to be loved and accepted. Yeah. And I think this is why, like, I get so passionate about in my podcast, like, because I'm, om- I'm like talking to my inner child, that little girl that just wanted to be loved for being herself. And, and connected. And yeah, and to feel safe to be able to just blossom and dance mm-hmm. and like run around and be excited about everything. And, and, I, and it's funny because like the digital nomad community was the only, the first community that I mm-hmm. thought, wow, these people are actually free. But then when I started to really get into it i was like oh my god these people are just as lost (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. yeah. (laughs) however but they're doing great at the the time time, they were rebellious yes they did stuff we did stuff that wasn't the mainstream yet there were a lot of people who didn't understand so you're gonna travel and work how like how are you gonna do that how are you gonna afford that like all these yeah like uh, we kept getting in the newspaper everywhere we went or on the tv because people were just like who are these crazy what is people going on, right and then covid really changed everything right mm-hmm. so now people have a remote job thrown in their laps and it's kind of like super normal now it's to like do, mainstream to do this right but that also brings in a lot of people in the nomad community who never had to really figure this out for themselves and really mm-hmm. like think outside of the box right so so it's a little bit of a different community these days I would say I think uh you're right a lot of people are lost and maybe all I knew at the time was that I just didn't want that the normal life yeah let's we say. didn't want to be in the quote-unquote matrix exactly so so all I knew was that, right? So I th- still think it was an amazing stepping stone. For sure. To Everything I went through, I'm so grateful yeah, yeah, for yeah. because it, all it makes got sense, me to right? where I am here. You can only connect the dots looking back. Yeah, and like I also love the part that we played in it, you know? Like I'm really grateful that we found it early enough that we could be like community leaders and mm. and then, you know, before and after COVID, we're like speaking at conferences yeah. and like leading stuff and helping people i love i'm all love being in service mm-hmm. i love like so it's like i went through it early enough that now i can give back and help other people mm-hmm. and now i'm just trying to figure out the best way to do that in a way that still is like super nourishing for me you. Yeah, yeah of course yeah i'm in the exact same position so um what i think uh we understood from uh the very beginning mm-hmm. is that um a lot of nomads at the time eight seven years ago when we started mm-hmm um they were looking for freedom Mm -hmm. and probably part of me was doing that too because oh my oh my lord the the commute in london every day was just killing me right and other things as well it's like really intense city but i just understood in the beginning what i was doing is i thought it was almost too good to be true that i could be traveling wherever i wanted and make money that was just crazy so every two, three weeks I was moving, but also I was moving all over Europe 
to visit friends. Yeah. And then I was like, hang on, but these friends have like normal lives. They don't have time to be entertaining me every day, right? Yeah. So then I was like, but they're mu- I mean, I'm seeing people with computers at cafes, so there must be more people like me. And that's when I started doing events and and probably not as consciously. <laughs> you know, I, I d- wasn't I- consciously creating a community, but I just wanted to connect but i think it's really important to say to people that like we saw something that like didn't exist yet Mm -hmm. so like yes maybe you weren't like i am consciously spiritually making community but like we literally were like oh we don't have friends so we just Mm -hmm. went and did a meetup and like made a bunch of friends made them come to us yes (laughs) and i think that this is something that is can be very inspiring for people is like if you don't have what you're looking for and you can't find it just make it you know make it it exists yeah you yes you are unique but also there's people like you (laughs) in the world (laughs) and maybe like this is also an opportunity for you to like do your thing in the world like for us it 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 felt like the most natural thing in the world for me to like make community and run co-working spaces and run conferences and like bring everyone together i was like yes this is what i'm here for and now i'm like looking at like what am i here for now like what's Mm -hmm. the next thing because doing like before I even started like when you and I started traveling like digital nomad wasn't a word and there wasn't really you couldn't like google it and like find out where people hung out we just (laughs) made up meetups and like different things and even before that like the way I first got into it was I started throwing events for the local artist collective in Salt Lake when I lived there and it was just the people who were not Mormon and weren't religious and, mm. you know, they had tattoos and I thought that was cool. And they drank mm-hmm. coffee because Mormons mm-hmm. didn't drink yeah. coffee. And um, No pleasure. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so I was just leaving Jehovah's Witness Church, but I was living in a city where also had Mormons. So it was just like lockdown everywhere when it mm-hmm. came to pleasure. But anyways, and then I started meeting all these people who were super artists and beautiful and amazing. And then... And then I entered the digital nomad community and then I was like, okay, this is great. And I felt like I grew as much as I could from that. And then Mm -hmm. I started doing when lockdown happened on the island, everyone who was left here was a digital nomad, but there wasn't anyone who was traveling, you know? So I was like, well, what do we actually need now? We don't really need a co-working space. We need like a place where we can actually just be together. And then that's when Andy and I started our Uh, remote collective community space which is basically a three-bedroom villa that we turned into Mm -hmm. an event space (coughs) and it was so amazing and then that was like the question we asked ourselves is like if we had kids today Mm. like would our kids would we feel safe having our kids into this community with like people who um were well-rounded enough and you know like the ecosystem on the island was like such that we could grow our own food and Mm. we could have good schools for them and it was like a place that felt safe enough to do this. And so this is like what we were building. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I learned what I needed to from that. And now I'm, and then I started going to the play parties and like wanting to be more sexually empowered and wanting to create safe spaces for other people mm-hmm. to stuff. How was that for you? No. Or do you want to talk thing. about this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So Rosanna came to one of my play parties. How was it for you to come? You were the tea master. I, Tea lady. tea lady. I, I want to say tea lady. Okay. And also, uh, Jess was the master tea lady for sure. <laughs> she was in charge. Giving the uh, I was Jess. just assisting with tea. <laughs> um, I, I enjoyed, um, well, it, it, first of all, it was very scary for me to go to this because uh, as I, you know, just casually started the podcast with saying I'm not really, uh, having a lot of sex right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was, it's kind of like it gets scarier the longer you've not had. Why it. is that for you? I don't know. It's, it just, it's just very comfortable to like do my own thing all the time and not be with another person. And uh, this is, so you mean it's yeah. vulnerable. Yeah, 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 exactly. Anyways, um, so it was interesting to watch you do this, of course. And, um, Yale was also. Uh, running a lot of the facilitation. So uh, I thought you did a really amazing job of creating a safe space. Um, I enjoyed a lot of the exercises. But after that, it was like, okay, y'all are good to play. Mm -hmm. I was happy that I had a task to go and tend to, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Which is not the case for most other people. So 
um, I had probably a little bit of different experience. So, so just let people know, we had a sanctuary safe space on the front balcony where you could go out and Rosanna and Jess would be pouring tea and just asking you, how's your experience going? And then other people who were in the party could come out and also come and talk. And it was kind of like a community check-in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also a, a really great space to watch what was happening inside. It was like yeah. front row seats on one of the rooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, it was interesting to um, be able to talk at, you know, an event like this normally about everyday things with everyone on the porch or the balcony. And mm -hmm. um, it was funny, like the later it got, of course, a lot of people got more and more comfortable. And uh, there's one bedroom that looks a bit like a cinema i would say <laughs> yeah so from from the porch you can look straight into this bedroom and a lot of stuff was happening there and in the beginning it was like oh they're having fun okay well let's continue making tea but then at some point it everyone like a lot of people had already left but everyone who was left started watching what was going on in mm -hmm. this room and it was almost so much fun mm -hmm. like not creepy that some people would go there and like do a little performance <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny um well and you know of course I take my tea duties very seriously <laughs> Mm, and Jess as well. So at some point, there, more and more people were leaving, but there's still some people left in this bedroom. But now Jess and I find ourselves by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still like laughing and having a good time, you know, saturated on tea, you know how it goes. <laughs> and um, at, at some point I go to the toilet and I come back and Jess is like, this is a very different experience watching by yourself. <laughs> So that was we uh, we had a great time. Um I think um these parties are um great. I haven't signed up to any other ones, but I think I may consider it under certain circumstances and within certain like yeah, I mean I'm still um you know this journey that I was just explaining earlier. I'm still in the middle in the middle of it. So uh, you know, I, I uh, on the one hand, yes, I want to push myself, but also sometimes I need a break. Well, I need maybe you shouldn't push yourself at all. I don't yeah, even that's like those true. words. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, I need um, I need some healing from healing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm also uh, giving myself some space to make sure that I'm having enough fun and enjoying myself, and not just you know digging deep into the shadows every day. Yeah, because I mean, we're human. This is like, we are here having a 3D experience and we're supposed to be, I always joke that we should be laughing more than we're crying, even if we're doing both at once. Totally. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing both at once a lot of times. <laughs> like, yep. yeah. like today I was, I was just telling you earlier, like I was woke up this morning having like so many emotions and I don't know, sometimes when I'm, I wake up really emotional, I just, I still let my mental mind take over. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, the logical thing to do is take Afro, my dog, to the beach. And yeah, this you know, normally helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I went to the gym and then I was at the gym and I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, I don't even want to be here. And then the person next to me is just like aggressively running, you know, like, <laughs> <when you're laughs> <laughs> 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 just like this is not my vibe at all and then i went and got a smoothie and then i went to the like and you were the whole time you're like so do you want to meet up and do the podcast and i was like i don't know man and then i like went to the beach and then when i was in the middle of the massage i realized i was just actually hungry like this whole morning Even i was suggesting <laughs> to I know. eat i know oh but this is what God. i'm saying like sometimes i will be so much in my emotion like i don't even know it's like I'll be so in my emotions yeah, yeah. that I can't even get sense of what I need in my That's body. Interesting, yeah. Like for most people, they're so in their head yeah. that they can't. S and I'm like, I'm so in my body yeah, that yeah, I like yeah. forget to do the normal. Like Faraday's always being like, All right, did you eat enough? Did you? And no, I'm like, yeah. oh, that's a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. And so I came home from the massage and I just like ate a ton of food. And then I was like, wow, I'm a normal person again. Yeah. Well, it's also very grounding, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you were like floating uh, all over the place. And yeah. And like this week, um, I, you know, all the stuff that I've shared before on my podcast has been like, is a lot of my deep inner learnings that I've had over the last lifetime, you know? <laughs> and, um, and then there's the everyday reality of yeah. me just being like, okay, I got through 
something that most people, if they have gone through it in one timeline, they probably would not be saying, or they would have a lot of reasons to complain. It's not, but I've like, I choose joy and I choose to have this beautiful timeline. And then allowing myself to actually receive that timeline has been such a process. (laughs) Um, And so this week I made up this thing where I told myself that I wanted to have a week where I allowed myself to have everything be okay. And that if things were, if, if my mind wanted to make up or my emotions wanted to make up that there was a problem, I was just going to write it in my journal, unless it was something like really urgent. Mm -hmm. I was going to write it in my journal and then decide, okay, like the following Monday, basically one week from then that I would look at everything. And if it really needed to be addressed then I would address it. And what I (laughs) realized this week is that my nervous system goes through these things where it tries so hard to make sure that I'm safe, you know, in a, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. But the way that it it does it is sometimes in a very emotional (laughs) can quote unquote be a negative thing of like me freaking out, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I say freaking out, it's not probably what other people consider freaking yeah. out, but it's just me. You don't yell at other people <laughs> no, or anything. I'm not like throwing things. Yeah, I'm just start like throwing a tantrum. No. Like, I'm just like, let me speak to the manager. <laughs> I'm just aggressively journaling and just yeah. being like, I need some space. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't even know why I started talking about that. I am very happy that you're here Thank on this you. island. Yes, me too. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah eating is important eating and is also important. it's just a little pleasurable moment that you're yes. creating for yourself right it's like really nourishing yeah i don't know i'm just obsessed with food so i think about it all the time <laughs> you are obsessed with food <laughs> and i love it hmm. especially when we're in lisbon together you always know the best places to eat mm, thank you yeah <laughs> and um but yeah we were talking about um let me see because there was there was something yeah, sometimes I just ramble. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Anyways, uh, so we talked about community is important. Good. We got that point. We talked about um, here. Oh, yeah, the community that is necessary now here on Copangan that you're trying to figure out what the next step is now after the play parties because there's a new chapter coming up. Do you have any ideas or hints? Yeah, so when... I came to the island, it was two days before the whole country locked down, like right when the whole world was locking down in March of 2020, and or maybe end of February 2020. And um, then a lot of people went home, and the people that were still here, we made this beautiful community where we all worked together. And I, like I said, the community space, the remote collective community space. Now that the world is open, and there is so many people on this island, like there's just it's like overwhelmingly amount of people and there's so many it doesn't feel like that to me so this it doesn't feel like comparison yes in comparison to me being here and i go to the beach and there'd be like literally i'm the only person on the beach you know for most of the day (laughs) um so it actually isn't that yeah okay this is all perspective but all of that being said what i mean by that is like this is actually a really great time for me to be building community you know there's so many people and in the past like you know eight years of me traveling I, well, it's Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year, guys. If you hear the fireworks going off outside. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so in the past, like, eight years that I've been a digital nomad, I would be like, this is a great time to build community. Like, wow, there's all these people. Let's do things. And hold on, I'm just going to (laughs) wait. This is like a lot. Firecrackers. Firecrackers. (laughs) Just as we pause, Afro is sleeping on the floor. Just what year is it? Is it the year of the... Do we know? We should probably look this up. <laughs> I feel like I want to say it's the year of the snake, but maybe that's just because my birthday is the year of the snake. Can I Google this? Yeah, Google yeah. it. Like how Joe Rogan, like there's the guy in the background, he's always yeah, Googling yeah, yeah. things. <laughs> um, so we're saying next things for me on Copenhagen. So... I feel like I learned everything. Wow, those fireworks. They just keep going. <laughs> it's funny because the, they're Thai people, but they're celebrating Chinese New Year. I mean, I guess everyone can celebrate Chinese New Year, but they're just really going for it out there. Yeah. Uh, I think we should learn more about it. <laughs> okay. Because we are welcomed in this beautiful country. 
Dun, 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 I might have Faraday just cut this part because it just keeps going. <laughs> okay, no, wait. No, no, it just no, keeps going. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Chinese New Year. What's it called? Okay, well, hang on. Tiger? Oh, it's no, the year of the tiger. To the tiger. Yeah, I think last year was the tiger. Enter year of the rabbit. Oh, uh -huh. it's the year of the rabbit. Okay, so I don't know if we're going to cut that or not, but that was a lot of fireworks. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. We're back. This was uh, the interlude. <laughs> interlude. Fireworks interlude. Um, so your question was, what is my next step for community building? Okay, so I really learned a lot by doing the remote collective community space because it wasn't just that we had a physical space. It was like we literally were the ecosystem for the community here, which was a really beautiful social experiment because I had never done that. Like as a digital nomad, you just like bop in for two or three months and then you're like, okay, peace out. Mm -hmm. And then you, you don't really, I mean, you try your best to integrate in the local community, like of whatever country you're in, but you don't have that much time to do that, you know? And here it was like, we were here for years and no one knew was coming to the Island. So we, we got to know all the Thai people that were here. There's a lot of Burmese workers um, that are immigrants here. We got to know them. We did a lot of fundraisers for the Burmese families on the island. We did fundraisers for the local animal shelter. We just did a, we had a, a community emergency fund where people could donate to a fund that Andy and I were in charge of. Like people just made us in charge of it. <laughs> we didn't ask for this. And the people would donate money for it. And if someone in the community really needed the, the like for instance, a single mom's son broke his arm and sh he, she couldn't afford for him to be in the hospital mm -hmm. and so we paid like the community fund paid for that nice. and it wasn't like necessarily like, a super public thing but like a lot of people if you knew about it you knew about it and you like basically if you needed it you knew about it like, um and it helped a lot of people and it was just beautiful because and then there was a lot of account but then it was really interesting because there's a lot of accountability that came with all of this because like when things would go quote unquote wrong, like people would call Andy and I, like they wanted us to be mediators between them and the local Thai police do not get involved in like domestic situations. So if someone's being abusive or this thing or, or someone's being like sexual harassment, we were the ones they would call. And like, you know, I felt very underqualified to handle a lot of these things. But then I was like, if not me, then whom? Like, you know, mm -hmm. these people are alone. And felt and a, a big responsibility. Yeah. And I, and I was like, so then we started um, creating, we got connected with, we call, in Copenhagen, there's, there's something called the elders in the community. It's just like people who own some of the businesses and they've been here on the island for like 20 years. They're just like older people mm -hmm. who, they started doing these like community councils where it was like, you know, there wasn't anything legal that people could do to kick someone off if they had raped someone or whatever, but then you had to face the community council and like we could, they had connections with the Thai police and if it was decided on the council, then you could ask, you could get nicely asked to leave the island. And it was the first time I'd ever been in like some sort of tribalism and it felt really safe. I mm. was like, wow, people cannot just like fuck around and like hurt each other. Like people yeah. are actually being accountable. And not only are they accountable in the sense of like a legal thing, but like everyone in the community would know what was going on in a good, in a good or a bad way. Or if we need to warn each other about someone or whatever, or if we wanted to celebrate something, everyone knew about it. And yeah. so it felt, I think since my religion, it felt the most connected I'd ever yeah. been. It almost functions like a little ecosystem village that yeah. works. Yeah, right? yeah, Where yeah. Everyone has a role, and there are some people who give advice, some people ask for mm -hmm. advice. Yeah, I and understand. Yeah, and I, and I think and also, like, we started connecting with a lot of eco-villages around the world, because this was my next thing, was, like, Andy and I were looking at hotels that we wanted to take over, resorts that we wanted to take over, and, like, build a village here, and that mm -hmm. was, like, the next phase, and then we had investors that we wanted to, like, buy land and, like, actually build property, and I was, so we, so for me, I was, like, I don't know anything about running a village, you know, I know mm -hmm. how to do community building, but managing something long-term, that's a whole other thing, and I had seen it go so wrong in my religion that mm -hmm. I was, like, 
I really want to make sure that I understand this. So I started reaching out to all of these eco villages like Tamara in Portugal yeah, and yeah. some in Costa Rica. I think you even helped me. I had like an Excel spreadsheet and you were sending me um, different villages and I started connecting to them and I realized that I didn't want to run a village. <laughs> like Yeah, you just want to join one where you have a role that fits you. Yeah, or I like I was yeah, I was like I want to be part of something and maybe I will run one later yeah, on, yeah. like but not in the way the world is now. Yeah, yeah. You know? And also it's good to also see like sit back and learn and see and uh, of course then have, you know, probably you'll have <laughs> We know, we know each other. Uh, yeah. You will see ways in which things can be done better or differently. For sure. And mm -hmm. just like what I noticed by seeing them around the world was just that like a lot of villages are getting built still kind of in the old paradigm, you mm -hmm. know, or like the, the infrastructure for the new earth or new paradigm yeah. that we keep talking about that we want to build isn't necessarily ready yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am only ready to build the new, new. <laughs> and also, I'm still young. Like, I'm in my early 30s. You I really have fun. I want to play. I have all that and, like, responsibility. Yeah, and so, and then with Faraday and I, like, falling in love, and, like, this is something that I have been calling in, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, almost my whole life, like, you. <laughs> I wanted you to share with everyone what you were talking about with me and guys. <laughs> Like how you were like, like I'm like Kim Kardashian. Every time you turned around, I had a new boyfriend online. <laughs> I did ask <laughs> to not involve <laughs> the boyfriends in the <laughs> online persona anymore. You are perfectly fine as your own powerful high priestess self. Yeah. But um, <laughs> maybe in the future. We will see. Uh, that was basically all these guys before that were not good enough for me. Yeah. And this is, you know what? This is to me the only proof mm -hmm. that you don't fully understand your worth as I see it. What do you mean? Okay. So I, what I really admire about you is that you... I, it feels like you know your worth. You know what you're capable of. You know your powers. And it's something to be in awe of, guys. It's not just a standard human being right here, right? <laughs> so sometimes I think that you know it and, you know, that. But then... I sometimes look at your past curricu man cur cur curriculum and I'm like, does she know it? <laughs> what I, do you think about this? I think that, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. I think even me knowing my worth, it's like we still forget, you know? Yeah, we forget. We forget. And then also, sometimes you get lonely. Yeah. And like... This is like the thing with when Faraday and I got together is like I really spent most of the summer alone. And even when I was in Europe with you, I was just like, these people are below my standard. And I like like really kept to my standard. Whereas I think before I had my mm -hmm. standard of like these people are on my level or like this is what I choose to allow into my life. And then there wouldn't be anyone. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I would just get lonely. And then I would yeah. be like okay, well, I'm doing my thing, I'm building my thing, and then I would just start hanging out with a guy who, you know, was handsome or wealthy or whatever, and then slowly they would just, like, start creeping into my life more and more, and then they mm -hmm. would want to claim me or claim f space in my life. Mm -hmm. And then I would wake up one day and be like, what just happened? Like, how did you... And this was like, it was like men were my only kryptonite. Like, in every mm -hmm. other area of my life, I was like super bold, super going mm -hmm. for it, and knew my worth. And when it came to men, of course, that was like my dad issues. Yeah. And also, yeah, wanting to just... Get the approval as well. and Yeah, and just also be, just be loved, Be loved you know? and supported and cared yeah, for. Yeah, of course. And, um, I think that's a very human thing. Some guaranteed uh, regular sexy time <laughs> is also of course. not the bad side. See, this that. is another thing, too, is, like, I think maybe this is different from a lot of women is, like, I also am very into my sexuality and I'm very empowered in my sexuality. But I was trying to figure out how to do that in a way where it felt good all the way through because, like... I don't think men that I would get involved with would realize that I could be emotionally compartmentalized around like 
And I don't know if that was actually healthy for me to be doing at the time. So I was basically like emotionally compartmentalizing myself and I would sleep with them and have a really good time. But then they would get hooked on me. Mm -hmm. And then I would just be like, I don't know what you're... And I would be emotionally (laughs) avoidant because I was like, no, I don't think that we're aligned, you know. But then they would just be in my life more and more. And then there was a couple men... It was probably like one or two in my whole life I've actually like been in love with like all the way where I was like, uh, and then like, you know, it really didn't work out and then it really hurt me and it took me like so long to work through that. Mm -hmm. And so now with Faraday, like it's been a lot of preparation energetically and emotionally, even before he came into my world, like I could feel him coming. And then now that he's here and (laughs) Afro's sneezing. (laughs) And now that he's here, I think, I feel that there is a lot of integration of like, okay, we have arrived yeah. and now we need to make sure that the 3D reality is working. Now we need to make sure that our emotional yeah. reality is working and you can find your soulmate and the love of your life and then you can still have to figure out what to do with them totally. every day, you know, and, and of every, you know, it's going really well and everything's amazing. And then the, for me, that's, that's, and you're happy and you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, but I was talking to my godparents this week and they were just like, you are so used to chaos, like from the way you were raised and that's the way you live your life, like traveling all the time, working on multiple businesses all the time. Like your nervous system is so used to being... In stress mode. Yeah, like stress, survival, hustle mode that when I'm calm and things are calm, that is actually when my nervous system starts setting off red flags. Because yeah, you think, uh, it's boring. It's, like, not good enough. Or, or like, it's the calm before the storm. Like, mm-hmm. something's coming that's bad, you know? Mm-hmm. Because growing up, like, if something was calm, usually Would something bad happened. Either. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's better to be prepared for the bad thing instead of have it ca- catch you off guard. Mm-hmm. And so this is something that I'm, like, really working through right now in a very beautiful way is, like, allowing myself to flow and just receive and be in love and Mm -hmm. and so back to the community building thing yeah is um i i feel very called to do retreats for play parties Mm -hmm. um so basically more sexual empowerment um experiences but and not but but and do them deeper so that mm-hmm. they are more integrative and like an immersion almost. yes like a retreat immersion mm-hmm. versus the ones that i've been doing before is like a one night play party mm-hmm. and what would happen is like sometimes people have been to a play party before and so they're like ready to play they know what to do yeah. they're like yeah like, yeah yeah get on yeah with they're the like facilitation the, yeah, the yeah games. like the workshops games they they would tell me afterwards i get feedback they were too long i just yeah. wanted to play mm. then there's the other spe- side of the spectrum where people have never been to anything else before they and feel they really more yeah they feel really safe with me for some mm-hmm. reason to try it for the first time but then they're like I feel like I just met these people and then now we're expected Mm -hmm. to like, not expected, but we're invited to just go for it. And their, their nervous system is overwhelmed by that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot going on, like not just sexually, right? There's feelings of rejection. Mm -hmm. There is, um, yeah, just uncomfortable. Maybe you keep feeling unsafe in a way with a different person there's a and there's also just so much programming we have around like shaming our sexuality yeah. and feeling guilty for being pl- in our pleasure you know mm-hmm. and or just being naked and also, like there's so much yeah, maybe you're just giving someone a nice back rub and mm-hmm. that can be nice as well and then the expectation of what needs to happen after that mm-hmm. and like yeah. so the the immersion would be more like one the first night everyone's meeting each other like no touching it's mm-hmm. just like f- more emotional boundaries consent workshop mm-hmm. and games to get to know each other the second day would be the play party immersion type of f- like facilitated and then the third day would be integration so this is what i'm currently working on and then of course in the universe it manifests that now there's like a tv show that's interested in filming this mm-hmm. and so we're in talks with them and we'll see how that goes but either way whether it gets filmed or not like this is the next step for me Sounds exciting. Yeah. And when it comes to like actual community on the island, like Koh Jung will always be a major home base for me. So it, I will continue to keep coming back and building beautiful things here and the village will happen when it happens. <laughs> and then uh, I think Faraday and I have just really, we decided we would love to have, I mean, everything's flow state, so it can always change. But for right now it's Copenhagen in the winter and then Berlin based in the summer and then when we're in Berlin we travel you know around Europe and go see friends go see you in Lisbon and everything because he is German and he ha- does his meetups in Berlin so it's funny because he's kind of 
in Berlin. He, that's his town, and Copenhagen is kind of my town. Now we're like merging both of them mm -hmm. and merging all the groups, and everyone's becoming friends. <laughs> Um, I want to rewind to something you said mm -hmm. earlier. You said tribalism, the word mm -hmm. tribalism, but in a context of we are a tribe. Mm -hmm. And I um, was just thinking about this word, I think it was this week, where tribalism in um, the normal world mm -hmm. is considered a bad word. So it's cons it, um, it is associated to them versus us, to wars, disagreements... Um, you know, that is how this word is used in a big part of the world. And I just think that's so fascinating because I see, sorry, should I shut this off? Yeah, just um, put it in airplane mode. I just realized I should put mine in airplane mode too. Just because it might interject with the sound. Yeah, it's off. Mm -hmm. Um, just because for me, tr a tribe is such a positive word. A yeah. tribe is, you know, ever since we've We've, we were animals, uh, we still are animals, but <laughs> we are, we have been in tribes like it, all over the world, right? This is not a, a thing specific to a certain area in the world, world that there are tribes. We still have tribes, mm -hmm. right? And we're just not very conscious uh, sometimes of them, but it could be the, the damn chess tribe if you wanted to. But I just think it's so funny that somehow along the way this word got a negative connotation and i'm just here to remind you to not listen to all the games they play to disconnect you right if you think about it like us and our ancestor heritage you know whether we were back in like the homo erectus sasquatch era whatever like but we really were like in a tribe where If you were not in the tribe, then you were fending for yourself out in the wilderness. And probably not surviving. And probably not surviving. So your nervous system is hardwired to want to be in community because, and so I, I actually made this graphic for Instagram where I says, oh, cool. it says you are in tribe now. And mm -hmm. this is like something I want to like put on a t-shirt or mm -hmm. a kimono or something because yeah. when you allow your body to settle into that feeling of I am in community, mm -hmm. I am connected, and then that means that I'm taken care of, like my, my basic needs are met. Yeah. And then when you have those basic needs met of survival needs and you are connected, then the next thing that we have as humans is to want to create beautiful things, you yeah. know? And I f it makes me sad that so many people spend most of their life still in that survival mode. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell everyone that you have the opportunity, just like... Yeah. You, Rosanna, and I have, you know, we don't come from a lot of money. We don't come from a lot of opportunity, but we made our opportunity mm -hmm. and we manifested it in our very, very much. We chose our reality and we went for it. And and then you can choose to have this reality where you're in community and you're in quote unquote tribe, whatever tribe you want that to be yeah. in. Shall we give some ideas for people who mm -hmm. feel very lonely and of feel course. like they're the only one who's like this? And of course, yes, you are unique, but... <laughs> um, how to find people who understand you and that you can have fun with and learn with and grow with. Right. So, um, what kind of ideas do you have? Um, I always look at like, what am I interested in? So for instance, like for us, like when we first were starting out, we were interested in remote working and traveling. And so, um, I started just Googling co-working spaces and remote work and like trying to find people. And I really couldn't find anything. And, And so then I made a meetup for people like me. Like I, before I started my co-living travel company, I had moved to Costa Rica back in like 2013 and I worked remotely there and they literally did not meet anyone else who was working remotely. It was just me and a bunch of surfer guys in this small surf town. So you took the initiative? Not at that time because I didn't even, also I just left my, my yeah. cult and I just got divorced. So at that time, no, I didn't. Yes. But when I went to New York. Depressing. Yes, letting my body thaw out. But then when I went to New York after that, I started organizing meetups for remote workers. And it was basically, it was meetups for people who wanted to leave their job and start traveling. And though that was me. I was like, I didn't start a meetup for who I was going to be. I accepted who I was right yeah. now. And then I tried to find people who were like me. Mm -hmm. And then I just was like, let's hang out. Let's talk about it. You know? So this may sound scary to some people. Like, what if no one comes? How do I even 
let people know that this exists. So did you use a platform to advertise yeah. this or to let people know that this event existed? I think I used Facebook groups um, and also meetup.com. So meetup.com is really good and it's all around the world. And it's great because if anyone is looking for any sort of community or connection, they go on there and you don't need to know anyone. At the, like no one is expected to know anyone at the meetup. You just go because you're like, this is interesting. It's normal to not know anyone. It's normal. And it's normal to talk to strangers yes. or to a little group and just join a group. So it's a permission slip to be like, I can just show up and be me and make friends. So I would rarely recommend if people or you, whatever interest you have, whether it's bicycling or veganism yeah, or maybe anything. Maybe some other people are already organizing it mm -hmm. and you can just join. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't exist, you can do what Brittany and I did and just start one, right? Mm -hmm. And is it scary? It, it can be scary. It was actually also scary for me to do the first one because I was, um, I had this uh, bar that I said, I don't know if five or like 50 people are going to come. So um, it may be potentially be embarrassing if only five or less <laughs> people come right but that's okay you just find a bar where you feel comfortable and where bar i'm saying bar but it could be cafe it could be uh, a field a park anywhere yeah, I mean, right like Ferdy does his meetups in the park a public park and they get like 60 70 people mm -hmm. every week it's like people will like fly in from other countries or take the just, train in. Just any appropriate location for yeah. what you're trying to organize. Wherever you right? live, you yeah. can make up something. And you know what? If you're scared that no one is going to show up, just bring one friend. And then the worst case is that you and your friend are going to have some really quality time. Right? Yeah. And you say the thing about like telling the restaurant or bar or whatever that there might be people coming. When I first did mine, I didn't really tell anyone. I was just like let's just meet at this coffee shop or let's just meet at this park, you know? And then it wasn't even, even relying on anyone external. It was like, you know, if the people came to the coffee shop, they just ordered a coffee, but it, like I wasn't putting expectations on myself or anyone else that people were going to show up. It was just like, and then if, you know, 50 people came, then we'd deal with it then, you know, but especially mm -hmm. with your first ones, it's probably going to be like five or 10 people and that's okay. It's really beautiful because what we don't realize is how we change people's lives. Like yes. I, I still have, and I know you have the same thing too, where people will meet us and they're like, I met my boyfriend yeah. or my husband yeah. or my, my wife. business partner. Like at your meetup. Yeah. Or like, yeah, like All I did a, like I always, everywhere I go, I'd always just do a meetup in a new city because I wanted to make friends. But then I realized that I was making everyone's friends for them, like their friend group. And then those mm -hmm. people would start traveling together or would start dating each other. And yeah. And that's why we feel yeah. like the moms. And it's kind of also like so cool to see as long as you take some initiative or or you feel, let's just imagine you feel stagnated or alone or mm -hmm. I don't know, you're in a dark place. The more you get out there and just do take and action. connect, yeah. the more magic is going to happen yes. because, you know, that person may have exactly something that you need at that moment mm -hmm. or maybe even say something that you needed at that moment, right? So the more action, the more that you go out there in the world and just play it's mm -hmm. literally like just get out of your house and go play <laughs> yeah as long as you're having fun and yeah. you're taking action on whatever inspires you yeah. like the universe whatever you want to call it the universe your higher self you yeah. or whatever like you will always get more energy back exactly and it's, if nothing else it's a it really given you get yeah. everything back in like tenfold yes and that's i think you and i are like perfect examples of this of like when we look at our life review after we die, we're going to be like, whoa, we had like the most epic timelines <laughs> because we just went for it whenever, mm -hmm. even especially when we were scared, we were just yeah. like, okay, so this is a good point. Mm -hmm. um, so the, I'm imagining we're talking to someone who feels like they're not understood. They don't have the people around them that understand them. Um, we're trying to convince them to say, well, uh, look for people on meetup.com or mm -hmm. Facebook groups or whatever. These don't exist. They start give, taking the initiative, but actually maybe they feel very introverted. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about this word introverted later? I'm just going to park that. Okay. And um, they feel scared to do it. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between your body giving you a signal of don't do it and being scared to do something that is actually going to be good for you i think it's asking yourself really bluntly like is this something that excites me or is this something that's giving me anxiety because yes but also maybe asking it about the outcome 
you know, like if yeah. you're imagining yourself sitting or standing or whatever the activity is that you're doing with these people, does that excite you? Because the organization part is just how it happens, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe the organization part is the part that scares you, but not the part where you found loads of people who you connect with, right? Yeah, and there's something called like green light and red light synchronicity. So if you get a spark of an idea before you put any judgment of whether it's good or bad or anxiety or excitement, if you get an idea and then it feels really good in your body and then you you take action on it and you just try something and it works out and you just try the next thing like that leads towards the thing, you know, like I'm going to make a meetup. So I go to the restaurant and they're like, yes, of course we'd love to host you. You make a Facebook event. Like people said, yeah, I'll come our meetup. And then you just keep going. You like mm -hmm. baby steps, like all the way through and everything Break just keeps going. Mm -hmm. And then it just works out. If you go and like you take physical action and like the restaurant's like, no. And then like, you know, you stop this and that and it's like maybe these are what we call red light synchronicity and maybe the idea you have is to help you clarify what you actually want mm -hmm. and then it doesn't mean that you should not do it just like think of something else that excites you and keep going but what I what I wanted to say about anxiety versus excitement is whenever you haven't it's your first time doing something it's so easy for us to let our anxiety take over when in reality if we are allowing our inner child to really speak it's like when you're an inner child on the playground and you're like, okay, guys, let's play this new game. Like, you're not like feeling anxious that your playmates are going to say no to you. Or you're like that s some rule is not going to work yeah, out. You're just like, let's go. It's imaginary. Yeah, you're you're just, just making playing. things up. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why I like to look at everything in life. It's like, we're just on this big playground. Yeah. Let's just try things. Yeah, we don't have to take everything so seriously as long as everyone is safe. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Yeah. And like you and I have gone through this so many times in different countries and different situations and it always, I would say 99.9 of the time always, always works, out. works out. And if it quote unquote doesn't work out, it's such a funny story. And it usually leads to some other thing that we need to do or learn yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And so like, it's always a good thing in the end. You know, it's always like a positive outcome. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to really emphasize this to people that, yeah, you know, and maybe you're not, maybe you're in a country where like people are, not very open-minded or not very like spiritually awake or this and that, but you can still find your community online as well. That too. Yeah. Like, let's just assume maybe this person lives in like a village or remote, quite remote or mm -hmm. something. Then online is a great alternative. Yeah. And, and then also like, there's so many online like groups that you can join on like Facebook or on Instagram. And there's then still an intentionally meet up yeah. somewhere down the line. Right. For sure. Yeah. And like, there's there's just so many like basically like I don't even want to put like a physical action on any of these things I just want to like get people yeah. inspired to follow it's whatever that, that, and remember possible. that you're connected to everyone okay mm -hmm. so even when you feel like these people don't understand me they're at a different vibe mm -hmm. they I don't connect to these people okay even to the people you dislike <laughs> you are connected so this is as soon as we start listening to nature this is the lesson. Mm -hmm. Don't believe that you're disconnected. You are connected to every single person in the world. Mm -hmm. And I've only learned that recently. I think I really, really felt it during my ayahuasca uh, experience. But to really feel that you are connected to every living being, mm -hmm. not just humans, right? Mm -hmm. That also makes you act in a different way and feel in a different way so it makes you feel like you're not alone it makes you feel like we're all brothers and sisters and we all want what's best for each other mm -hmm. um i do think there are you know realities where it's hard to believe this because well we come from those realities yeah. though I, I really want to speak to this because people have listened to my podcast about my upbringing and i'm not going to go into your story it's your story but I just want people to know that you and I come from a background of a lot of disconnection. And even in that, we still felt connected. We still felt connected enough to keep well, going. We knew it was out there. Yeah, we, we, we never really lost hope, I think. Yeah. And, and you had that because you had your experience in the religion. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, I've, I've not been brought up in a religion. Um, I did go to a Protestant school, but I didn't get to go to church or because my that was like anti-religion mm -hmm. but so i did I, I i even when i've never seen it i knew it existed community you mean yes yeah 
Why did you know it existed? I don't know, and I'm just recently learning that that's probably my imprint or my the way that my human is designed. <laughs> what do you mean? Like your connection? My human design is. is oh, uh, your human pretty, design. Um, there, have you already spoken about human design a couple times? I haven't really gone that much into it. If people don't know what human design is, it's a very interesting way to look at our reality. It's based on astrology. Um, and a lot of people are starting to build their teams about it. I've built a lot of my community around human design. I yeah. find it very fascinating. Let's call it a spiritual Myers Briggs. Yeah. Shall we do that? Yeah. 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 But uh, but it's basically um, you don't have to believe in it, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but it gives a couple of frameworks that makes it really interesting to understand how you work and how others work. And it event actually, this is one of our. Uh, we love Time it. passes, we right? Love it. This is what every human loves to do, <laughs> like try to understand themselves and others, right? Yeah, yeah. But there are a couple of uh, things in human design. There's a tribal circuit mm-hmm. and it, it goes, yeah, there's like a couple of things that are part of it are, for example, like um, like how nurturing you are for a community. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a weird line that I have is that I'm very good at managing resources for the community, which I, I am. Yeah, Funny I enough. think I have the same one. <laughs> yeah. But I think we have, this is what I find interesting is I think we have some of the same tribal. Lines, yes, yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah, almost yeah, yeah. This, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we have a bunch of yeah, overlap okay. there. Yeah, so there's this tribal circuit of all kinds of like little aspects about your personality that are almost wired mm-hmm. to for community, for tribe, mm-hmm. for village or mm-hmm. family, whatever that is, mm-hmm. right? And uh, so I, I think that I'm starting to think that this might be it. Like, how would I have known otherwise? I was, I'm an only child. I was, my dad was, mm, my dad is a very traumatized person with a lot of fears and aggression and um, issues that are unaddressed <laughs> and uh, he to keep me safe or his idea of keeping me safe is not allowing me out of the house almost ever so my life was mostly school and home mm-hmm. until I like I was already an adult mm-hmm. like I was already 19 20 years old I already had a full-time <laughs> job and there were still problems with me leading my own life and doing whatever I wanted, going out, that kind of stuff. So um, I had to leave the country almost to finally feel free from that. But, but you did leave the country. Yeah. <laughs> At 23, <laughs> I moved to Barcelona. But how could I, I still to this day don't understand how I could have known that this existed. But also, I feel like you've always been really connected to your higher self, like, or whatever people want to believe is like our mm-hmm. bigger part of our soul. Because I, I feel that when we have things that are, you know, in the Bible, they call them trials and tribulations. Like when we go through hard times, we have an opportunity to disconnect or connect to ourselves more. Mm-hmm. So we can disconnect and be like, everything's terrible. You know, I, I'm not worthy or, you know, I, I meant like whatever, all these negative things, yeah. ma- negative manifestations, or we can choose to have to have it be something that shows us our connection even more to ourselves yeah. and to what our path is in life. And I feel like with you, you were like, here's a super negative thing. And I'm like, no, I believe that something's better out there and I believe it's possible. And yeah. I, I'm like connecting to myself and you who was basically a prisoner in your own house, like moved to a country all by yourself, learned Spanish. Like <laughs> you grew up speaking Portuguese and Dutch. You learned Spanish, lived in a foreign country by yourself. And then on top of that, moved to London, which is like one of the hardest cities to live in. And you just like, we kept going and going yeah. and going. And like, to me, that is a resilient soul that is someone mm-hmm. who is very connected to their their higher self connected to their soul yeah and also i just always loved having fun right so even when i was a teeny tiny toddler i rem- i have made friends for my parents when we were <laughs> camping i would just wander off and go talk to Aww. well pre-words talk to <laughs> other little kids or dogs or adults and then suddenly my mom would come and pick me up and go like sorry (laughs) and then they'd start talking and then some of them are still friends with them today it's crazy right yeah so i think i think there's something there in my human design that maybe um that that yeah that's just a part of me but is it do you are you able to accept in your body that 
you could be just a very strong soul. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, very strong. Very strong soul. Yes. Do you feel like you're able to still connect to your inner child a lot? Yeah. And the other day I was wondering if I'm maybe living in my inner child a little bit too much. No. I'm also a adult woman. Not possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I I really love playing and even as an adult and it's crazy because I also forget what my age is a lot of mm -hmm. times I'm 39 almost 40 you if people don't know what Roseanne looks like she looks like she's 30 <laughs> I always forget your well, age you know, I mean what is age I think age is such a dumb a thing number, yeah when I was younger I felt so much older and now that I'm I'm not older, older but yeah. like older than I was I feel so much younger yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but um the, the playfulness I think is one of the weird reasons we're here yeah. right yeah we love going dancing <laughs> i think the one thing that we love to do the most together is dancing yeah <laughs> we're <laughs> gonna go dance tonight yes. and tomorrow morning <laughs> you know like it's a workout of some of some sorts because there's a lot of jumping involved so. last week when we were dancing a psych dance i was sore for three days after <laughs> And we both were like, we need to take a break. But the music is so <laughs> yeah. good. I was sweating, <laughs> sweating. And I'm like, I, I, I want to stay, but I we need can't to stop. stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, everything is easier when you're having fun, right? Yeah. So just make sure that you're having fun. Whoever's listening to this, please know that all of the, my podcasts and all the learnings I have, I was definitely laughing more than I was crying through all of that. <laughs> and it's important to have friends like you, Rosanna, where we can analyze things and then just cry about it and then laugh about it and then go dance and be kids together. And I want everyone to have friends like you. Thank you. <laughs> so happy I found you. And happy I found you too. <laughs> okay, I think we'll end it here. Yep. And... Get ready for our dancing tonight. No, <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you guys for listening. And thank you guys. Have a beautiful day wherever you are. Remember, you are very loved and worthy of love and connection. Okay, bye.